Um, so, good evening to everyone. Uh, start off by saying PLP. All the way. Uh, all the way. And uh, I want to thank you for allowing this uh, intervention. I was saying to your chair that uh, I simply saw the announcement uh, when I was flying over, and I'm here to attend a memorial service which is taking place at the Jubilee Cathedral at 7 p.m. Uh, and that one of the more prominent citizens of, uh, of Grand Key is going to be buried on Saturday, and they're doing a memorial service here. So while I was on the plane and I saw it, I said, well, let me just stop here since it's 6.30 and that starts at 7. Now, the curious thing about that is that when I was on the plane and I said it to somebody, they whispered back to me, but he was an F and M. I said, yeah, but uh, one time everybody was PLP. <laughs> so for old time's sake. So you've got uh, the two, uh, I guess three former prime ministers now, because I think Minnis, Ingram, and Christie are there in, in addition to um, Brave, Philip Brave Davis, the current prime minister. So the four of them are supposedly at this uh, uh, I was teasing um, the Prime Minister when he was getting on the plane in Nassau, and they told me that uh, Ingram and Christie were joining him on the plane. And I said, I heard Minnis is coming, but how come you didn't tell me he's coming on the plane with me? And not, <laughs> not, not the plane with you. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, all is fair in love and war. Um, there was a very important um, uh, funeral here, uh, Ms. McDonald, um, and I understand. Uh, that there was uh, a, ver a huge turnout of stalwarts, yeah. and I really want to thank you uh, most sincerely for uh, the effort which you put into trying to get that uh, organized. And I heard uh, stalwarts turned out, it was a good showing. And, um, you know, one of the things I'd said when I was here the last time is notwithstanding um, that there are issues and problems, if we keep doing things, it makes a, a magnet for people to come and get involved. Yeah. And so, you know, I pledged that the party would, to uh, whatever extent we could, uh, give you the support to do whatever, uh, the, whatever work you needed to get done, uh, because we have to keep the flag flying. Uh, and um, I really appreciate uh, all of the dedication and time which you put into this. Uh, one of the things I said was that we have to understand that all of us who are sitting in this room tonight are pretty extraordinary people because there's no election going on now. Election is far away. But we're here tonight thinking about what is going to happen four years in the future and trying to plan what is going to happen in the future. And most people uh, once, well, I don't even know if they pay attention to elections, but most people, as soon as the election is done, they're on to their to their life. You know, you've got your children to feed, you've got the mortgage to pay, and they're not really paying attention to who's saying what and who's not saying what. Occasionally they may pay attention to some headline they see in a newspaper or something they hear on the radio. But generally speaking, not paying attention. So those of us who are engaged as we are on a night like this are actually keeping the baton in our hands and making sure that it will be properly passed in 2026 or whenever the general election is called. And this is very important, very important for us because it's the political party that delivers the people to the House of Assembly. And I've tried uh, as many times as I could to say to those uh, younger ones who are coming up behind us that it is important for them to make sure that their branches survive, that they're in touch with the stalwarts who have a, ins the institutional knowledge and history of what the Progressive Liberal Party is and what it stands for, and to make sure that there are very simple things that, are, that require attention. So one of the things I've tried to do is to see whether or not sooner rather than later, the government can put some additional resources uh, into the hands of the people who are small business people and contractors in this, in this island. Because the complaints are largely economic. And I was saying to my colleagues this morning in the uh, brief time that I speak in the House that 
when I've gone from north to south in this country, there is no problem that I've found that cannot be solved by money. And we have to find a mechanism to deliver mm -hmm. uh, the goods because, you know, we're now 17 months in. People are getting impatient and they're saying, look, you know, you said when you came 17 months ago you were going to do X, Y, and Z. And even though we may have legitimate reasons for why something is not done, the fact is people are getting impatient. So we have to, you know, make sure that all of us keep our ears to the ground on that point. Because one thing you find is once the fix is in, you can't reverse it. And, you know, these days in a perpetual campaign, uh, it's always happening. So these folk on the other side now, they smell blood in the water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told them, well, you may think it's blood in the water, but sharks are in the water. So <laughs> you jump in the water, you'll find out very quickly yeah. what is there. And also that the PLP is not a convenient punching bag where you can get up and say anything you feel like saying. And then when you get caught out, you say, oops, sorry, I didn't mean that. Right? No, it doesn't work that way. And so we're going to defend the organization, defend what it stands for uh, as we continue to do our work uh, in government. Um, I'm uh, hoping that sooner rather than later uh, you'll get um, additional responses on, for example, the construction of the airport because that is key to this island's future. Uh, there's so many projects that are still the, the school out west. We were just discussing that, why that can't get finished. Um, the issues at the container port where they laid off the people, we got that reversed. And, but I, I'm told that they're trying to find some other ways now to get around all the things that were decided. So there's a lot of politics which is going on in this island. And you are our eyes and ears on all of this. And I'm never surprised. And I. <coughs> always try to be able to respond when people call and say, you need to pay attention to this or you need to pay attention to that. Now, obviously, all of us have limited capacities and, and uh, we have limited powers. But I always say to the extent that the powers that I have are, I intend to use those powers to assist you in whatever it is you need done. And there's a favorite expression of mine that says, uh, if your voice is all you have, you use your voice. Even if it shakes, you use your voice. Because that's how you communicate what the issues are. And there, there are many, uh, many issues. Um, I, I was sorry that I was unable. I think there was a fundraiser last weekend for the Grand Bahama Children's Home. Um, and I, I is, is it, or is it upcoming? But the, okay, so it's this weekend, right? So unfortunately, um, there are a couple of things happen. Like the leader has to fly off to Acklands tomorrow for the Acklands Homecoming uh, Festival. And then on Saturday, uh, Mrs. Thompson is being buried in Eleuthera. Uh, I think Commodore Smith is being buried uh, in Nassau as well. Uh, you have uh, Raleigh Butler's uh, widow, Win Winifred, who's being buried on Saturday. Then you've got our big supporter, Josh Culmer, who's being buried in Eleuthera. So, you know, we've, we've been sitting around the House of Assembly saying, you have to go here, you have to go there, you have to go there. Uh, there's a lot happening. Um, so we uh, appreciate the, the, the support, but what I was thinking is that if we get ourselves engaged in more projects, and one of the projects I really uh, think is a good project is to help children. Um, I spoke today in the last um, month or so, uh, last year, let me put it, the last 12 months. Um, I've met, I say met because they're babies. They won't remember meeting me, but I, I remember them. Uh, they're still. Um, less than six months old, or, yeah, but one is eight months old, two are just born within the last month. And um, I also mentioned a toddler today, his name is Chosen, and I was remembering how I met him when he was about three or four months old. And the experience of watching him uh, talk to, his mother talk to him at three months. I mean, I, I didn't actually, just watching him watch his mother 
his mother's talking to him, and it looked to me like he was actually understanding what she was saying to him, even though he could not articulate what she was saying to him back to her. But by his expressions, he was clearly following what she was doing. And uh, these, the other two are little girls, and uh, these are the most engaging little children you've seen. I mean, they're not, they're not even two months old yet, and they've formed their personalities and expressions, and it tells you that um, as parents, people who are, you know, people who are fortunate to be parents have a very special role to play because that is their world uh, for many, many years. The persons or person they look to is the parent, and the parent has to impart their knowledge and their values to them. And what I was saying is uh, that I hope for these four little ones, Tiana, Dakari, uh, Skylar, chosen, that when they reach my age, God will <coughs> hope that they reach that age, that they will have lived in a society similar to the one that my parents passed on to me, which is a liberal democracy where people are tolerant of other people's views, where there's no violence and crime, that it's economically and environmentally sustainable, and that there is tolerance and lack of discrimination. And I say that because I challenged the Roman Catholic Archbishop when I met him. And I said to him, why is the church silent while people are running around uh, whipping up hysteria over something which is an important problem but cannot be approached in a way where you're encouraging violence and discrimination against people? Because this is a country, 400,000 of us have to service 7 million people. We don't have the labor force to do that. So people have to come in from the outside to help us. But they're no threat to us. They only want to work here. They want to take the country over. And the people who helped us to become independent, look at Mr. Pindling's cabinet, or Mr. Linden's cabinet. Um, you had Arthur folks, whose mother was Haitian. You have Alfred Maycock, whose father was Barbadian. You have Clement Maynard, whose father was also Barbadian. You have Lyndon Pinling, whose father was Jamaican. You have Jeff Thompson, whose father was Barbadian. And then, in 67, remember that because we were all British subjects, people who were Commonwealth citizens could vote in the Bahamas. So majority rule came about, remember, the people who helped to cut the pine in Abaco and cut the pine here in Grand Bahama, who helped build Freeport, were from the Turks and Caicos Islands and all of them voted for the changes which we have today and helped to build the society we have today. And so we have to be really careful how we go about saying the things we do if we are to, complete, to have a society which continues to be harmonious. Uh, we obviously have to enforce the immigration laws and the government is doing that, but it cannot be done in a way which is taking the law in your own hands and then encouraging violence against people. That's not, that's not the way in these circumstances. Um, so I just want to say those few things. I hope that perhaps at one point you should invite the Minister of Immigration to come down. Keith Bell, I'll tell him to expect a call from you. And you, you know, call, it, call your folk together so he can come down and you can have a frank chat with him about what the situation is here on the ground and what he needs to do to help uh, solve any of the problems connected with immigration here. So that might be something we do. So uh, thank you for allowing me to say those few words. I go on to the Jubilee Cathedral. I'll uh, uh, give the Prime Minister the fact that I stopped here and uh, best wishes. And uh, I'm sure at some point he'll come himself and speak to you. But until then, uh, please, if there's anything uh, we can do, uh, just give me uh, a ring. Um, I think most people have my number, and if not, you can share the number with them, but I'd be happy to do that. So thank you and bless you. You're so welcome. You're so welcome.